Welcome back to the Nastogram RPG Podcast. This is Empire's End. Hi, this is Dean. I'm playing Lieutenant Commander Victor Argus, Operations Officer or Ops. Hey, I'm John, and I play Lieutenant Commander Poro Randar, callsign Metalhead, Commander of the Air Group or CAG. Hey, everybody. I'm Matt. I play Gaius Loctus Vilfug, and I am the Medical and Personnel Officer or MED. Hey everyone, this is Dan. I play Lieutenant Junior Grade Nero Orn, Communications and Intelligence Officer, or COIN. And I'm Josh, and I'll be your Game Master. This is Episode 8, Damage Control. After action report for the engagement in system space over Virax 2. Imperial Force Composition, Hunter Flight, two TIE Interceptors, Gamma Flight, two TIE Fighters, and the Andrali Hunter Corvette. Enemy Force Composition, two Rebel X-Wings, and an armed communication shuttle. Finally, we get some serious competition in this backwater. Hunter and Gamma Flight were able to focus efforts on the lead X-Wing while maintaining distance from the number two. Knight, great job following me in. That son of a bantha was a tough nut to crack. Star Eyes, I don't know how you kept that tie flying with the hits you took, but thanks to your efforts, I got clean shots on the number two. Worm, you better buy a round for the crew of the Andrali Hunter. They're the reason you're still here with us. Next time your controls freeze, make sure you aren't on a collision course with a flying communications bunker, huh? Though we may have lost an operational tie fighter or two, we all came back alive and the enemy was soundly defeated. That is all. Hey, uh, Bandit, did you hear the doc caught a live grenade and threw it back? Wild. With nerves of ferrocrete like that, we should see if he wants to get into a tie. So we'll say that about one day has passed since the chaotic engagements of uh, of our of our last episode. Um, so everything has been recovered, kind of assessed. You have multiple damaged ties, interceptors, and tie fighters. Two X-Wings and the shuttle were all destroyed outright. Nothing much to salvage. However, you did recover both pilots alive, um, but both uh, wounded. Both are in med bay um, being treated. Uh, your Kaliri prisoner, uh, the original prisoner, uh, is alive, has been transferred to the brig. His two would-be rescuers are both dead. Um, You're welcome. Matt. Uh-oh. Give me a uh, give me a first aid roll. <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. Um, minus one D. Oh fuck! All right. Oh, six on the wild die, and another six. <laughs> twenty two. Twenty two. DC twenty, sir. Oh, um, fuck yeah. The marine that was mortally wounded was saved uh, by an also injured Dr. Vilfug. You were given a pretty good uh, Commander Argus um, after action by both Dr. Vilfug, but his current condition, uh, his immediate condition, uh, made it a little bit more uh, difficult to communicate. Mm -hmm. Um, But you got a good rundown from the, uh, the unwounded Marine on what happened exactly how well Dr. Vilfug acquitted himself, um, most likely saving the whole group and your prisoner. And that's about where we're at. The damage to um, C-Deck and the supply wing, relatively minor. Um, it was essentially a, a small uh, improvised charge, essentially, from uh, fuel sources that was set off an extreme low security area that just basically just a distraction. Mm -hmm. Um, It did damage, not even outright destruction of a um, holding container, basically, um, but caused some decompression alarms and uh, things of that nature. So uh, in fact, from all the, all the action, um, the Reiko staff suffered no casualties, uh, no, no dead. 
Command. And there we are. Command and training, response time, readiness. Good stuff. Grenade and medical did what kind of damage to the uh, equipment? Significant, but not irreparable. Um, like, you know, call it like negative ones to you know, make yeah. it something like that. <clears throat> I'm going to say that, uh, Dr. Vilfug, your, your medicine scores are going to be rather impacted. And, um, balls. Uh, Dean, since you asked, roll D6, this D6. There's that one. There's two back to tanks. Um, a one, they're both fine. That fucking thing out of here. So you roll my dice. You no. roll the gym. No, you fucking I'm rolling it. I'm rolling it. I'll right, take it away. No, I'm just kidding. Um, t- two or three. Um, one, you said Bakta. Well, one, both Baktas are fine. Oh. Two to four, one is damaged. Um, five, and five, one damaged. Six, one damaged, one destroyed. That's pretty cool. the middle right? one again? Yeah, okay. I have no idea what those options were. Roll a one. It's fine. I think you're rolling shit. One to two is both Baktas are down. No, no. One is both Baktas are Jeez fine. Christ. Yep. Let's let, we, we got to keep I this on the podcast too. <laughs> uh, two to four is both back. Well, I guess if you're low, rolling at low, it should be bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> Our damage. Let's change it. Okay. Um, one, they're both destroyed. You tell me what, what happens. Two, two, one damage to one destroyed. Bully. I want to redo. <laughs> <laughs> I like the um, original way. Right now, you have zero operable back to tanks. You said going to die. <laughs> Matt, you're still what? Uh, deafened. You're not deaf. <laughs> what? Um, but your hearing is pretty impacted. Um, obviously, you were able to treat yourself, Dr. or uh, Lieutenant Harper um, has assisted you. So you can hear uh, and you can communicate in, in, you know, simple environments, any kind of thing that involves hearing. Uh, I'm going to give you a minus on like as far as per- perception, things like that. But we'll say you can, you can talk fine in a room. You don't have to over, over to it. Um, Damn. Uh, the commander and the Kaleri were both um, unwounded and the commander's condition, um, not directly after that, um, but over recent hours seems to be uh, improving. You expect he will, if improvements can din- continue, will be conscious within a day. I want to meet with the doctor privately. Okay. Can I execute that bitch also, inside? Dan, I gave you two extra dice on that. Correct. Com roll. Yep. You do have confirmation from all all <laughs> assets that you have that zero broadcast made it um, anywhere mm-hmm. outside the CIC. Outstanding work, Nero. Those two extra Wait dice. For the damage report, sir. And I think that Wild Die exploded twice on that roll, if I'm not incorrect. Uh, just once. I rolled a six and a five. Okay. Roll me 3d6. What are, you, much, what are your fucking made up rules for this? How much damage Bullshit. you're doing <laughs> to Rayco's comm system? <clears throat> so uh, if, you roll, roll low. if you roll, is a, there a wild eye in these? I'm treating this just like if the, you get it the between straight, a four and a five, the mess <laughs> halls. <laughs> there, there is a wild eye. Okay. Uh, all right. You don't, want it to be low. Don't this roll a seven total. Roll if they're all multiples of all two. All right. All right. <laughs> eh? Ten. Two in the wild eye. Reiko's comm system is heavily damaged, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which also has a uh, limited effect on its comm suite. There's some overlap there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call job security. <laughs> in, in uh, I have some, you're going to have to decide when you want to nasty grams? dispense of this stuff, Dan. There's all sorts of nasty grams. It's a lot being, of nasty. Uh, being this held was up. stuff that was already kind of okay. underway. Christ, what is the bottom three are all poster? connected. <laughs> <laughs> that one's separate. This one's separate? This is information that you were already in the process of getting from, from previous games before this whole combat. Okay. So Got over it. the last couple of days. Um, so basically, as far as communications, um, right now you're relying on the Andrali Hunter for any relay outside of the station. Okay. For yep. all the, our, uh, sub space radio, space radio. Yep. You don't know the condition of Kuipers. They have your expect it to be okay because it's 
you know, it's, um, what do you call that thing where it's not in the same thing and it's technology. Oh, it's not, it's not networked. Yeah. Or is there's like a different, like hard walled firm walled firewall. firewall. Oh no. <laughs> air gap. Are you thinking of air gap? I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's Star Wars. Mm-hmm. The, there, that is the only other subspace radio, um, that as far as you know, is probably functional. Operational. You could check actually, cause you have your, your back door. Okay. Um, and it is, but for right now, Imperial comms are relying on a custom Corvette that's tied up alongside. Yikes. Uh, I'm just going to read through these. Okay. Commander Argus and Dr. Vilfug, you want to have a conversation on the side? Yes. Okay. It can still be heard because we have good role players here. Vilfug. Commander? The first thing I would like to do is congratulate you on your bravery. Just following your lead, sir. You huh. and Randar. Well, I'd like to offer you something. I'm going to literally give him on the sly a little commendation because he just was in a firefight for his life and it's the second one he's been in and he kept Medbay from being blown up by literally grabbing a grenade and throwing it outside of Medbay. <laughs> um, is he a commander already? Uh, he's a lieutenant. Okay. He's getting a field commission right now to lieutenant commander. So I say to you, I say here, and I slide across the table whatever the equivalent thing is you would put on the your little uniform. Blue, the little blue Do you want to give him rank or like a valor? No, award? A, a rank with that stuff takes time. Okay. This is like on the like wartime kind of let's, let's do this right now. Okay. Um, I say you and I both know that you have been, you should have gotten this some time ago. I understand that certain bureaucracies are in place, but let's be real. You deserve these. I slide him across the table with my hand open. I slide him with the left hand, right hand to shake his hand. Congratulations, uh, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, it's, 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 <clears throat> thank you, sir. <clears throat> Next order of business. The CO, I feel like, isn't quite... Are you sure he's going to regain consciousness? Well, if... <laughs> <laughs> fucking <son. laughs> he slid him a rank and then asked that. Oh my god! <laughs> oh boy! What? There's a lot of ways to read this, Matt. Yeah, I can't... stand up and I I walk over to the door and I uh, lock it. Is there like an insight check in this shit? Of course, I put my gloved hand up. <laughs> Only villains wear gloves. I... <laughs> Factual, factual. <laughs> <laughs> Facts check out. Black gloves. <laughs> and those you have a six of fingers on your left hand. <laughs> you must be that Spanish brat I taught a lesson to all those years ago. <laughs> all right. I say, um, of course, I understand he will recover, Lieutenant Commander. It, it does seem like it's only a matter of time, uh, hmm. but... Let's not rush anything, Doctor. I turn and look deeply into his eyes. Agreed. We don't quite understand the disposition of the parasite that's tightly wrapped. I make a fist with my glove around his (laughs) brain, do we? What -hmm. kind of suggestions or other things it could do to him? That is correct. I've... I've read of alien species, uh, funguses and the such, which are able to take control of an organism and it's its way to reproduce, hmm. if I understand you correctly, sir. Or if I understand you correctly, are you telling me it's possible that he could be under the influence of some sort of creature we don't know anything about? Is he going to regain consciousness and simply return to CIC with a parasite in his brain? Do you think that's wise? (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Absolutely not, sir. I didn't think so. Not only are you brave, but you're intelligent. Quite valuable. Thank you, sir. I'd like to request... Thank you. Yes? Well, an experimental surgery to try to perhaps remove and isolate the parasite. Of course, 
I don't know what would happen to the commander in all of this, or even if the parasite would survive, but... Why would you call it experimental? Well, I've... She pulls the vibroblade back up. (laughs) (laughs) It throws Calari blood all over the walls. (laughs) Like when the toothbrush comes out of your fucking mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Well... (laughs) With the damage Medbay is sustained, it would be unassisted. Aha. Uh-huh. Perhaps discretion could be utilized here. Maybe we keep him sedated until we can get the Bakht tank up and running to just ensure that he receives the best care that the Empire has to offer. For him to wake up tomorrow and to be thrust into this situation to assume command... I'm not sure it is fair to him. Well, I, to be frank, sir, if tomorrow he did regain consciousness, there would be a litany of tests I would, I would need to run. It could be days or weeks. Hmm. Interesting. Perhaps months before I could clear him to return to command of the station. I'm glad we understand each other. I open the door. Dismiss, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Before he crosses the threshold, I grab his shoulder. And, Doctor, bring all progress reports about him to me. It's no longer necessary to keep the entire crew updated. (laughs) Holy fuck. (laughs) Understood, sir. And I'll kind of click my heels together. As far as they're concerned, he's on the road to recovery. Understood. <laughs> no. um, that's look, outstanding look. work, Commander. Thank you again, uh, sir. I'm going to look down at my shiny new badge, <laughs> kind of polish it up and give myself a little wink in the reflection of it as I walk down the hall. Dude, <sighs> I'm going to uh, suggest... Um, <laughs> a fucking noise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to suggest a character point for uh, Mr. Wilfug for climbing the ladder. A hundred percent. Bounce pass into the and the uh, And for last episode for the um, following the lead. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think you should get two. Um, yeah, I'd like to give two to Wilfug total on that. Nice job, Jim. Oh, yeah. Um, Thank you, boys. And I would like to give two to Randar. Um, oh, fuck yeah. For a awesome combination of inspires through action and bring out the best in those around him. Do it to it. Cool. Um, actually, I'm going to say three. Prove himself as the new CAG. Oh. Um, I really Only ship that wasn't damaged. We covered all of that. <laughs> yeah, <good>. suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling uh, Admiral, what's his name? Yeah, there? right? No, Using no. Uh, covering uh, TIE Fighters? <laughs> I did I did feel like I uh, maybe let them do their the reckless things a bit too much, but it's fine. Uh, it was... One shut off his radio. You can't do much about that. No, yeah. I mean, part of it was their the strategy. I told you they were going after mm-hmm. the weaker yeah, ships. Yeah. You know, it's yep. it makes sense to me that that would be like a rebel strategy. Like we're always outnumbered. Yeah, thin yeah. the numbers and traditionally as quick as you can. You shoot a tie fighter, it goes down. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was rather Dude, extraordinary. That was crazy. That yeah. That how many did, hits? Yeah. That you guys didn't. Um, yeah. Um, so really, so you should get said, another character point for <laughs> two, keeping everyone Two alive. for Vilfug, three for Metalhead. Um, I got two for Argus. Really? Uh, for In Control. And a combination mm. of in Overhaul, Imperial Command Ideology, and Vindictive. Yeah. I'm going to kind of combine that into what you just did there. Mm-hmm. What you just did there. Um, what a, what a, is it? And uh, I'm going to give two to Nero also for... for um, Rules are made to be actually just one for you, really. Yeah. Sorry, rules are made to be All broken. Good. That's what I got. Um, but uh, Nero didn't have a lot to to do in that specific yeah. window, so you did you did good role playing stuff with what you had to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna have plenty to going forward though, because there's also one <laughs> more Instagram for you. You guys um, can't even understand how many Instagrams I have. Just trademark. just do your best to track when that stuff gets disseminated because okay. that's on you. The only downside of giving nasty grams. Yep. Is is like it's now out of your control as the GM about like information when it's introduced. 
coming I mean, out. I'm generally probably going <laughs> to. I don't care about when. Right. Just like it sucks if like that never, <laughs> never actually yeah, comes yeah. out. No, I'm. Like, um, but the, that last one I just handed to you, that mm-hmm. is a message you retrieve when you go back in your back door to confirm if Kuiper um, has communication skill yes. up. Okay. And they do. Um, so a couple other notes for you guys. Later today, there is a fuel shipment scheduled to come off VRX four for you guys from Kuiper nice. um, that uh, they requested escort as usual. And Marita director Marita is uh, back on the station and uh, you probably had to reschedule meeting due to everything going on. So Fair enough. that will be on you guys when you want to pull the trigger on that. Yep. So there we are. Uh, Argus had your little lovely little conversation with the doctor. Um, what else is going on? Well, I guess quite a bit in terms of we need to, I I think Argus at this point is going to want to, we can role play or do you want to go meta here? Um, let's actually have one conversation before, let's say you're back in your, in the CO's office making yourself comfortable and uh, Lieutenant Seslin comes in or, or knocks on the door. Whatever you do in start in space. Enter. Sir, may I have a seat? Seslin. Thank you. Well done. Same to you, sir. Um, I have to say it's having you in command is, is a relief. And I think the station and the empire owes you a great deal of gratitude for what we've been able to maintain here. She, she's standing in the doorway still. She shuts the door. Is she armed? Uh, she has a repeating blaster rifle. (laughs) No, um, she has a sidearm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, uh, she, what does she look like? Goes over and sits down. Um, she looks like you're an asshole. <laughs> you're a fucking douchebag. <laughs> Give me all your character points. How many do you have? <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> Dan, Dan looked at me with two things in his eyes. <laughs> and I read them both. <laughs> Fuck, that's awesome. Sorry. <laughs> gotcha, motherfucker. Well, twinkle toes, Martin. (laughs) (laughs) I love you, Josh. You're working very hard. I I had him for most people. (laughs) I know. I'm just. Um, She looks like a um, Tignataro about 10 years ago. Okay. Tignataro 2010. Short hair, um, kind of a narrow, tight face. Yeah, um, she's on uh, Star Trek Discovery. Oh, wow. Yeah. She says, um, sir, I need to express some concerns to you. By all means, and have a seat. <clears throat> thank you. She sits down. She said, please understand that I am just need to voice some concerns that I have, and I, I think I know and I trust that you'll take them as just my opinion or whatever you will call it. The preamble is not necessary. You're a fine officer. Sir, with what's been happening, I, I don't think it's wise or safe to let the station's internal security and our, our counterintelligence efforts be left in the hand of, of a criminal of, of a man who is is wearing this uniform merely as a get out of jail card, mm. sir. I I understand that Lieutenant Orn, what you've discussed, that he does have abilities, he does have talents. But right now, sir, we know there are, are, are rebels in our midst. There are saboteurs, and we're relying on a man whose allegiance to the Empire is. Suspected best, sir. I see. 
but I mean, what's to say that a better offer won't be all that it takes to swing the last line of defense this station might have. Hmm. I hate to say this, sir. I have no love for the man, but I know Lieutenant Thorne has significant reservations. I have no love for comp force, but sir, it, it would be a direction that we could use to, if you decided without putting the burden on yourself to change the position of Tenet Orr. I see. Have you and Thorne discussed this? Not explicitly, sir, but we have. He did come to me and asked about a little bit more about what happened and indicated more, more concerns about, about Orn. He came to you and expressed concerns about Orn or you went to him and expressed concerns about Orn. He came to me, sir. I, I did. I did reveal that I had my own reservations. Officers talk. That is all. I, Sir, I, I understand you're in a difficult position and that we are limited, but right now all it would take is one person in the right position, and he hmm. has the ability to be in all those positions. I see. Hmm. Lieutenant, have you, Orthorn? gathered any evidence against the man yet? Or are we just talking about his history? Sir, I I will be honest, I haven't. I have tried. I couldn't begin to touch any of his systems, his files. Mm. I see. I have not made any deliberate efforts, but I know that I don't have the technical expertise to. I don't know if anyone on this station does, sir. And that's, I mean, that's exactly what I'm concerned about. Even even the second senior chief Triald, I mean, he, he has more experience by years for sure, but I mean, you said it yourself, Orn has talents. Mm, indeed. I appreciate you bringing this to me. She takes a deep breath and kind of stands. Anything else? No, sir. How is Thorn adjusting? Um... I haven't seen a lot of him, sir, to be honest. Only a couple conversations over the last couple of days. I know he has been a little bit browbeaten since he got put to work in engineering, mm. but he's... Roy can be tough. With what's happened over the last 24 hours, he's seen it fit to... I believe he's conducting somewhat of his own investigation, sir. And Thorn he, is. Yes, sir. I see. On? The infiltration of, of Rako, I ah, believe, sir. I see. I don't, <laughs> I'm not an expert in, in law, but he seems to feel that it is his uh, right and his duty as a representative of Compnor. Again, sir, I, I want to make clear, I'm, I'm not a, a fan of the man, but it doesn't mean that he can't be right about one thing. I concur. She stands to attention and clicks her feet. Dismissed, Lieutenant. Thank you. Thank you, sir. She about faces and walks out. Okay. (laughs) I just collect my thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) Metalhead. Yeah. At some point, you're uh, maybe down the ready room looking through gun camera footage, whatever. I don't know. You might want to be considering some write-ups for or or um, the opposite yep. <laughs> for some of your pilots. Um, and uh, there's a, a calm from engineering. Lieutenant Roy is asking where you're at. Uh, I'll take it to my office. And I head over there, calm down. Roy. You, uh, you're you in the ready room? I'm in my office. I'll come by. Need to need to get moving. All right. He, he's there. Quickly, later. You don't think he was in engineering. He would probably call him from a hall station. Yeah. He's got a data pad. Looks greasy. I'm like writing. I'm probably writing commendations or writing the after action report, basically. Well, compliments your people for bringing back scraps that I can't believe are space worthy. <laughs> uh, me neither. I thought we had lost two at least. 
Well, I'm guessing you're saying we're going to lost one. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And unless we get complete overhauls, Gamma 2 is, is down hard. Well, parts at least. Gamma 1, not much. We can probably salvage what we need, but take it under advisement of the interceptors. One's down. I can, we're going to, I don't know. You want to talk to Skipper and, and, and figure out priorities. The phalanx is still down. Got an interceptor that I could prioritize and get back up quick. Got a couple of interceptors that still need service that haven't haven't finished up from all the atmospheric work. Hmm. And then the TIE fighters of the 11 we got on station, two are down until somebody shows up with something a lot more than we got. Two are down for a good time longer than that. Another couple could use service. So I'd say at best we're about 50% right now. Well, I'm glad you got all the pilots back safe. But this is for you and... And uh, Command Argus to work out. You tell me what what needs fixing. Can we speed up the timeline if I hand off a couple pilots to you for service? Maybe for the service, if that's what you want to prioritize. I also got some stuff on this station to deal with, if you're probably aware of. Yeah. Nero goddamn microwave the entire comm system. Oh, I heard. Yeah. Couldn't even call control <laughs> on the way back. Yeah, well... We're going to have to figure something out. This thing is a Band-Aid on a jury rig. And I have a feeling that Corvette may be useful. Maybe more useful than fighters, depending on what just came into the system. Hmm. Well, I'll talk to Argus about it. All right. I'm going to get back down, see if they're finished patching up C-Deck. Oh, and Roy. Thanks. Yeah. All right. See you, sir. I'm going to make my way to the brig. Okay. Which is empty, I'm assuming. Uh, the brig? No, the, the Clary's. The Clary prisoner from the surface is there. <clears throat> nice. And the pilots? Or are they in the med uh, bay? Pilots are both in med bay. Okay. Under, under guard. Med bay's kind of shot though, right? Um, It's significantly limited. Is it set the, up in a different location or? No. no. Um, Essentially the main... Uh, the ICU slash operating room mm-hmm. part of Medbay mm-hmm. is essentially disabled. Okay. You have two recovery wings with half a dozen beds in each that you can treat patients in. Um, there were already were still some patients there. Um, so basically he's got to make do with that. I don't go to the brig. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to go down to, uh, the deck area and, uh, you know, I'm guessing, I know ops guys work there. Maybe there's crossover with some of Roy's guys. And uh, I'm going to make my way over to one of the cargo airlock areas. Okay. <laughs> Fucking blast. It just <laughs> airlock himself I pick up, out. I pick, up, I pick up the call. You pick up call? I pick up the, I pick up the receiver. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Lieutenant Thorne, please report to the deck. Section 221. Over 1MC? Over yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right uh it takes a it takes a bit okay it takes about a little bit over 10 minutes and um thorn walks up <clears throat> he has uh he's got his uh sidearm he has a blast vest on okay and uh he's holding a data pad i smile thorn yes so <clears throat> pardon I'll, me for the delays i was <clears throat> i'm walking around just examining like you know where it would open just in the middle of an interview. <clears throat> How goes the investigation, Thorne? I was... Yes. I, was, uh, I heard that you were conducting an investigation. Well, of course, sir. You must assume that um, Comp Force, as, as the representative, must, must do what other wings have failed to do and, and try to get to the bottom of exactly who is infiltrating Reiko 72. Mm, indeed. Difficult times. Who are your suspects? May I? I reach for the data pad. Uh, he p- pulls it back away from you. <clears throat> it, um, it's incomplete, sub. Uh, <clears throat> trust me, I will. Um, it just says Nero in big letter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stick figure, and like <laughs> him stabbing it. <laughs> um, I, I will uh, be sure to um, copy you when I send it up to Sector Comp Force Command. I see. 
Do you not want to share information between us? Perhaps we could uh, investigate this with a greater alacrity and efficiency. Um, so if, if there's information you have, I've, there is um, members of, of the command staff I still have not get a chance to speak to. I am, of course, concerned for the compartmentalization of, of information. I start brushing some dust away. I blow on he, the on the button. He kind of like he <laughs> distracted for a moment. Um, I push the button and close us into the cargo bay. Just the two of us. Yes. Yeah. Well, this seems to work. Yes, wise sir. Um, I was just about to indicate my concerns for sharing information would be, of course, not knowing where uh, leaks or traitors are located. Mm. Perhaps I could be a traitor. <laughs> so I. I think your conduct thus far has proved that to be um, beyond reproach. Ah, I see. Beyond reproach, you say? Why don't you give me a domain check? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. It's so fun. <laughs> beyond reproach. You just see one bead of sweat roll <laughs> down. Five plus one, eh? It's pretty good. 21. Okay. Plus one. 22. <clears throat> um, you see Thorn, he pauses, kind of clears his throat, and then a little bit more backbone than you expect. That's fine. Um, you can tell he's nervous. Of course. You of see course. the single bead of sweat. Swallow it. Roll down his the side of his face. <laughs> <laughs> but you see him kind of like take a breath and, and consciously try to straighten himself and say, yes, of course, I mean... You must realize it's impossible to rule out certain quarters at, at this point. Hmm. Where do you think we should focus our efforts, since you're a member of the crew? Well, sir, um, of course, I think the clear indications that the Kaliri, um, I believe this individual, um, Mr. Montari, Platt Montari, the former custodian of the station... Hmm. I believe that he should be taken into custody. I intended to speak to you about this recommendation. Do you have evidence against him? I do not. Um, I have full evidence of his lack of um, disclosure and cooperation to my investigation, sir. In what way? Well, it is clear that uh, these these threats are coming from the Kaleri uh, residents and workers aboard the station. And I went to... I put my hand up. Does he report to the Empire? I, I believe so. I mean, you're in command of the station, and therefore, you do know, Dean, like, uh, metagame-wise, it's... They would report to us. Y- yeah, it's a little bit of an awkward, a semi-ambiguous situation where he's almost more of, like, a consultant, advisor... Mm-hmm. Contractor, yeah. Um, contractor, like he doesn't, he doesn't he's really here for the handoff. Yes, but he's still here. He he's doesn't here. really have any formal power, but he, he, he used to run the station, and a lot of people that are on the station are still people that, you know, mm-hmm. so that respect him. Yeah, <clears throat> I would say, uh, Thorn, plot, Montaro, you do understand that. He was the custodian of the station, correct? I'm assuming that's why you looked him up? Uh, yes, yes. If he has um, had a leadership role that he doesn't seem to have completely rescinded. Hmm. Do you think people respond well to him? Uh, they do, sir. And hmm. as you know, sir, from experience, people also respond well to demonstrations, hmm. particularly demonstrations of imperial intent. Indeed. Things... And- would you agree that locking up a man who has the hearts and minds of a bunch of people we don't know and who is bad, to see him go into the brig, how do you think that would respond? Well, sir, it would go to, to show that um, none of them, none of these individuals aboard the station are beyond the Emperor's reach. Hmm. And in fact... It could go a great way towards demonstrating that the Empire is as strong as ever. I see. And as you operate in the purview of Compnor, what if you decided to lock up one of the staff officers? So I would 
as a demonstration. Hope that we would reach that conclusion together, if that becomes necessary. I see. But not this one? D- sir? Locking up Montaro. Not this decision. Um, well, also that, of course, I, I, as I said, I plan to, uh, approach you once I had my preliminary investigation completed. Without evidence? Just your theories? Um, investigations and evidence, I mean, not all evidence is, is hard. I see. And, and sometimes we must, we must give ourselves the opportunity to gain further information through interrogation. Let me be clear, Thorn. I appreciate what you're doing here. I think you are competent as an officer. I'm happy that you're serving on board this vessel. I would like to, if I may, give you an indication as to the tactical situation in which you find yourself. The tactical situation is thus, Lieutenant. That man is here. People that are sympathetic to him are here. They've proven that they can reach out and touch us if they want to. This is not a situation where we're in the confines and the comforts of a Star Destroyer making examples of people down on the surface below who can't touch us. Swooping down in a Lambda-class shuttle with a display of force and scooping up one of their leaders and bringing him back onto the Star Destroyer and interrogating him sends a message. We still can't be touched. The tactical situation here is quite different. I am not sure you're going to get the response that you think you're going to get by locking up a man that you have no evidence on. Well, I'm just asking you to consider it. That's all. Understood, sir. I will further my investigation, and perhaps we can consult when I do have some more results. Are you familiar with material evidence and what it means? Yes, sir. Perfect. Material evidence (laughs) would be what I was interested in. Should you find any, I'll escort him to the brig with you. Very well. um, Thank you, sir. I trust... Thank you. You're doing a great service for the Empire. We all must, even in this backwater. I hit the button on the the thing. There's a delay. Things start flashing. Like the open the outer airlock? Yeah, like we've only got so much time. And I kind of look around at it. Uh, sir, th- that's the out- outer doors? Of course. Don't worry. I, I'm, I'm looking at the countdown on it. You see, he kind of strains up. You see him, his hands kind of rub together. I, I wait for it to get down in a few seconds, and I hit the button and kill the antechamber, open the door. And I say, at least that still works. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> yes. You're doing a fine job with Roy, I'm told. You must be exhausted, though. Don't work yourself too hard. I would hate for you to have an accident. Dismissed. <laughs> he visibly goes a bit pale and w- takes a m- couple moments and walks away. Have you used all your specialty die? Because you should put one in intimidation. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. I, have in, I have one in interrogation. Uh, I have one in interrogation. Slash oh, interrogation. Okay. As, as a specialty to intimidation. Got it. Mm. Which isn't necessarily beating people up. Sure. It's just yeah, making yeah. them either feel comfortable or uncomfortable enough to tell me the truth. Yep. Depending on who I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. One of you guys, preferably comfortable. <laughs> Thorn, preferably uncomfortable. <laughs> like Success. in the back of a Volkswagen? <clears throat> I walk out, I dismiss the crew, and I say, I was just testing the systems. Well, Roger that, sir. Works, works like a charm. Well done. I go. Tap him on the shoulder twice. <laughs> <laughs> See the two of them, like, two crewmen turn and, like, talk, just start talking softly to each other. Clearly. <laughs> he sees me come out with a Compnor agent. <laughs> and the Compnor agent walking away like you just saw Casper, the not-so-friendly ghost. <sighs> oh, the things I must do, I say, as I walk through the deck. I'm going to go see Roy. I just just a quick check in, and we don't have to role play it. Okay, I don't want to dominate the whole thing. Um, he he gives you an update. Um, mentions that he just had, a personal I respect you visit. Okay, kinda, you know, he says he he gave some information to uh, to Randar, and uh, he's pretty tied up. And he th- thought the two of you could go over it and let him know kind of what priorities to work on. Basically, well. definitely demonstrating more, um, not respect, but 
kind of for, for Randar than he had before. Not okay. that he disrespected him, but, um, you know, he's looking outside of himself a little bit. Right. And he's like, all right, you, you two are the two senior officers. You know, I got stuff to fix. I'm not going to bitch about, about it. it. Yeah, exactly. You guys tell me what, what's important. Um, it's also much more of like a, probably just how he likes a tactical combat situation now. Yeah. You know, he, he loves to grumble and, 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 and bluster, but it never when, gets in the way of like actually getting yeah, shit done. Sure. Okay. All right. I suppose I'll go see Randar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the ready room, my office. Ah. Bye. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Man. Beep, 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 beep. I walk in. <laughs> oh, Argus. Hey, Victor. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> he Fargus. says, pointing his thumb at himself. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Call me Fargus. <laughs> Call me Michael. Uh, What's your first name again? I don't even know. Oh, uh, you don't po- know? You have to Poro. look it up. Poro. Hi, Randar. <laughs> May I? Yes. I sit. <sighs> well, I uh, <laughs> just spoke with uh, Roy. Mm. <clears throat> me too. Oh. Well, give me an update on what we have going on. I was thinking about it. That shuttle gave me pause on what we should have out there. That The Corvette, we need that fixed. Indeed. We need heavy weapons. If something else comes in the system, something larger than a shuttle, it'll be tough for us to deal with. Yes, we don't have any missiles or photon torpedoes. Proton. What do we call them in Star Wars? Proton. P-R-O. Proton. 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 The what? Avius does have a concussion missile launcher, mm-hmm. but how it's set up right now, it's, I mean, technically there is a clear firing path for it, but it's limited. you, you yeah. maneuver, you'd have to, you have, literally have to maneuver the entire system. Mm-hmm. So if there was an object that was dead in space, we could shoot you it. could eventually <laughs> shoot it. <laughs> what are we going to lose, Randar? Uh, four fighters for long term. Um, Bringing us to how many? Uh, about half, so about a flight, four, four or five in operation. Uh, a couple of short-term services on uh, a few of them. The TIE interceptors, if we divert work from the Corvette, we can get them up sooner rather than later. But um, like I said, with a, a two flight of interceptors and a full flight of TIE fighters, uh, I would rather work on the Corvette. I see. I agree with you. Let's do it. What do you need for me to facilitate this? Um, well, I'll just bring it down to Roy. I'll let him know what the priorities are. Very good. I just had a discussion with Thorne. Oh, <laughs> a good one. Hmm. I met him down in engineering. Hmm. He was wearing his blaster in a blast vest. Well, dangerous times. Indeed. Very dangerous time. Like my blaster's like on my uh, <laughs> desk. I look at you. I look at your blaster. I look at my blaster. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he dies for it. <laughs> Fucking shoot out in the place. <laughs> I say, uh, Thorn is to is doing what Comp Nor officers want to do. You understand? Hmm. Is this the time for it? It is not. Thorne is an interesting character. We need to make sure that we we can't completely disrupt the man. We have to allow him to operate, but we should in we should dictate how he operates without him realizing that we're doing that. Yes. I don't need a witch hunt hmm. on my ship, but I also don't need grenades being thrown into the med bay. I heard about that. Glad everyone made it out. Hmm. Indeed. But the tanks are down for however long. One is destroyed. Ugh. And we're not getting any replacements anytime soon. Kind of wistfully, like, look out. <laughs> Never you port. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, we don't need them for the pilots. We need to do something for the internal security of this station. I offered the pilots up for CAS. Um, we have more pilots than we have ships now. Significantly more yeah. now. Mm. Uh, he's he's taken them. Yeah. Uh, or, or or however many you offered. Right. Definitely to help with, uh, um, basically guard duty and patrolling. Yeah. He's Perfect. he's got like pairs of pilots. Basically, um, yeah. Brander says, uh, yeah. The the we usually have a three stage watch 
for our ready pilots, but with the lack of TIE fighters and TIE interceptors, that's a can bring down a two stage and the third stage goes to Cass for security. Seems to be working for him. I understand that the Reiko 72 Alpha was not the most glorious post we could have all received here. <laughs> that said, perhaps some of us, myself included, we're not always completely on task. One of the things I would like to do, Randar, is have each of my department heads, myself included, and I'll look over all of them personally. I want to go over every single personnel file, including hmm. these civilians. I think they're our weakest link. I mean, I'd have to agree. After the attacks, who knows? We need to prioritize them. I'd like to read through them. We might want to talk to them. Hmm. Get people isolated. You might be able to learn a little bit about them. People hear things. You bring them in, you talk to them. They might get the impression that two things. Number one, they know we care about their safety. And number two, we start putting something in their heads to where they know we're watching. I feel like these rebels just have free reign to run around. And that <laughs> can't happen. I can't feel that confidence to storm into med bay. If it wasn't for the doctor and the two Marines, of which I understand we lost one. Uh, he survived. He survived. <clears throat> he's mm. in bad shape now and he's not even out of the woods. Okay. Mm. Without a back to tank and with a medic- limited yeah. medical facility, he it's not clear he's going to make it. He may not make it. I can't have rebels with the audacity to come on board this station and attack us without a response. Mm. I think a light response would be interviews. One thing I wanted to tell you is, should Thorn start questioning you or your people? I need to know right away. Yeah. Well. I, I can't have him walking around. Investigating. Investigating. Everybody. Pilots. Indeed. No, I fully agree. And. He has no sense for people. No. He only knows when he's in danger, and he only knows when he sees an opportunity. He can't read between the lines. It's a serious weakness. And he'll see, see pilots speaking with civilians, and I'm sure he'll draw the wrong conclusions, but we like R&R as much as the next person. If he becomes a thorn. More. Come on. Ten more <laughs> yeah, pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Strike that. If he becomes a problem, we'll ship him off. <laughs> to where? <laughs> Jabuik. <laughs> I stand up. <laughs> well, I'll, yeah. have, I'll have the report on your desk about the action. Indeed. Shortly. And in terms of uh, looking through those dossiers, let's get together in a couple days. All right. I'm going to have that same conversation with the rest of the department heads. I want them to look at their dossiers. I want them to look at their people. I want them to have discussions with every single person in their department, one-on-one. Okay. And I want them to compare and contrast their own reports to those people with those that we have, what we know about those people, and see if we can spot any fucking discussion. Anything. Got it. And so to be clear, going back a step, because I wasn't really listening to the nitty gritty. That's okay. Of, I was listening to the, the role playing part of it. Did you actually give Roy specific priorities for, I, for I repairs? Will. He's going yeah. to. Okay. So maybe that's something we can do. Uh, you know, s- send me that list in between. Okay. Um, so include basically <clears throat> um, the comm system on the station. Yep. The service to TIE fighters, TIE interceptors, the repairs to the, the TIEs and the repairs to the phalanx as the major um, elements. Okay. I, Lieutenant Orn, uh, Nero is going to go looking for the doctor. Okay. Where would you be found, Matt? Uh, uh, and Oh, go ahead. Real quick. Victor's going to re- read the AARs. Okay. I'm specifically interested in Nero's. Okay, of the action. Did you get your submitted in time? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> would you want this conversation in private, or would this be would it be convenient if Argus was coming by to speak to one of you? Uh, this particular one in private okay. with the doctor. All right, Matt, where where are you? Uh, I'd probably be in my office, going over uh, equipment list, seeing what was destroyed, salvageable, all that kind of good stuff. It doesn't look good. Um, you still have a few 
AIDS. A <laughs> few people recovering from that decompression, the few that are worst off. Um, you've got two Marines that were badly, one, one is touch and go right now. Um, another that was wounded down on the planet. Uh, that was a few days ago. Now he's doing much better. He did get some back to treatment. Um, you have a couple X wing rebel pilots that are in there. So you've got Marines standing guard. Um, and you got a whole lot of broken shit. Chaos. And you got a commander with a brain slug. And I just sent you a nasty gram. <laughs> Ooh. Fucking busy. Um, sent you a nasty gram. So, uh, that will give you a little bit more information that you may or may not want to reveal about what you've discovered about the brain slug. But essentially what I will tell you is that without intervention, commander Hefner is going to wake up. Can't have that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Just got promoted. Just don't, don't want to go down the ladder. Grab another point for climb the ladder. <laughs> if you, uh, so you're you, with what you have, you can easily, you want to just keep him heavily uh, sedated. Yes. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's a, that's a character point for climb the ladder as you keep your lawful commanding officer. <laughs> the dude was gonna spit <laughs> um and uh you're there walking working away when make the fucking stupid door noise again <laughs> different every time it's like, a, it's like a well it's a hodgepodge like a of a station intercom so. <laughs> you know what reminds me of the intercom system that used to be at 11s oh yeah remember yeah. that um, anyways, uh, yeah. And, and the door opens and, uh, Lieutenant Orn is standing there. Doctor, may I come in? Uh, yes. Uh, have a seat. As, uh, he walks across the floor, his eyes kind of flash to, do you have your new command pin on? You better fucking believe it. Yeah. I say, <clears throat> uh, Nero says, um, Congratulations on the promotion. Well deserved, I'd say. No. I heard there were heroics. Hmm. Nothing our commander wouldn't do. Yes, our commander. He is an inspiration. I uh, sit down and I say, between you and I, Wilfug, I think there will be resources available. And if you were to make a list of certain things you needed for the medical bay as it is sustained so much damage, but it is so critical here on the station. We may be able to leverage our position to make sure those supplies were prioritized. Hmm. I so, think I can get you a list. Good. Good. I will see to it. Thank you, Warren. He he stands and kind of gives you a salute, sna snappy salute, and walks out the door. Give a salute as you walk out and kind of sit at the desk for, for a long pause. Open up a new <laughs> sheet on the data pad and start making a list. Cool. When appropriate, Josh. Victor's going to call the senior staff just to report to CIC. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to kind of go around and get people to come, and then I'll have Victor come last. Uh, I'll have the doctor come last. So everybody else is Victor. Sorry. <laughs> you called him Victor? <laughs> I'm going to bring everybody into the CIC, and then I'll have the doctor come last. All right. Um, so <clears throat> senior staff, department heads? Uh, yeah. For, just for a just for a a little quick celebration. Quick, a little quick, I give him a little quick celebration. I kind of okay. whisper. Um, in the ready room? Yeah, just CIC. We're, okay. we're, we're, we're not taking the time off here. We got okay. a lot of work to do. Everybody just pauses all around. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then when he walks in, we're going to clap. Oh, I see. See what I'm nice. saying? I get yeah. it. Sorry, I should have just said that. We didn't, okay. We're not going to waste the good surprise. Got we're, it. Yeah, we're not going to. It doesn't have to be a whole thing, but it seems silly to not let people know and make them feel better. And, all right. Yeah, you know, sink the hooks in a little. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't say morale is low, but it, you know. I know. People are stressed and strained. That's what I'm thinking. This does seem to, uh, does seem to help. Pass. 
Um, Pass a drink around everybody. A, okay. As I, as I walk into the room and everybody yells surprise, we start clapping. my hand immediately uh, goes for my vibra Come blade in my side <laughs> for a second, just like a uh, little He's PTSD moment of like, fuck. Uh, oh. <laughs> is, uh, is the doctor carrying around a marine combat vibra blade now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Victor says, I, I kind of do one of these and like, have everyone kind of hush. We're all standing around with like a drink in our hand, saluting this man. Doctor, it is my pleasure to officially welcome you as a lieutenant commander for your heroics on and off the ship. Here, here. Here, here. Clapping plate. Gutted our Cough enemies up. with a vibro blade and somehow kept the med bay from being completely destroyed by a grenade that he, I'm told by one Marine ran over to you, grabbed, and threw back into the hallway. Oh, man. I look around. Uh, when he mentions uh, the vibroblade kill, uh, Doc, your eyes are sweeping, and you get a long nod from Captain <laughs> Cass. <laughs> Psychopath. I don't know if that's one you want, but you got it. <laughs> it appears that he has an erection. <laughs> oh, God. Dangerous. <laughs> I'll walk over nope. to him and uh, whisper in his ear. If it, if it lasts more than four hours, meet me in that day. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Don't call me the doctor. Call me the surgeon. <laughs> Snickety stick. All right. Um, but yeah, there is a, uh, you know, a good few round, rounds of applause. And uh, Dr. Vilfog, it feels good, um, especially after probably the three most eventful days of your life. Mm. I would venture to, yeah. to, to bet. Yeah. I mean, it's not quite as nice as that time I, I stole my dad's car and or spaceship and flew to the moon Space for that Ferrari. date. But, you know, this, Vic- is, this is up there. <laughs> Victor says, it takes more than bravery to earn rank around here. And Wilfug has been an outstanding medical officer for a long time. He's been competent and he has kept us in good health and he's handled the personnel exemplary. You've all, all of you have done exemplary. Enjoy the drink. Take a few hours off. But let's get back to work. Thank you. I'm going to actually go into the ready room. Okay. Just so they can chill without feeling like, oh, this fucking guy. Would you, you know say that his medical decisions are unquestionable? Is that, what, is that what you're playing? <laughs> Flawless judgment yep. in all decisions. Yep. Medical related. Uh, Captain Cass actually does walk up to you, Matt. Mm. He uh, he approaches you and, you know, maybe waits for like, a, you know, the first few people to kind of come up and congratulate you, hangs back a little bit. And once you have like a, a touch of space, he he walks up and uh, he says, um, I uh, read the por- report from... Private Chirot, I, uh, well, he, he holds his hand out to, to shake your hand. Reach right out. And- he, as you <clears throat> kind of close your hand with his, you, uh, you feel something in it. You look down and he gives you, uh, it's the Imperial Marine, um, like crest, like a metal pin. Damn, dude. <clears throat> and like he, he takes his other hand and squeezes it around it. And he says, uh, I think that's three of my men. That owe their lives to you over the last three days. Dope. Glad you're here. I as well, and, sir. Uh, Thank you. You guys said I was just trying to manipulate him. You know, like, fuck <laughs> you guys. <laughs> the fucking nerve of all of you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, jaded piece of shit. Uh, fucking scummery <laughs> of the earth. Bunch of fucking Star Wars lovers. <laughs> <laughs> the good guys. Um. <laughs> there is a an encrypted message on your data pad. Uh, encrypted the, to me. Yep. Oh, sick. And it it's from Orn. Ooh. It just says new information. We should speak. You up? Got it. You up? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, after he after he talks, you peep that new season of Down Abbey yet? <laughs> after Cass talks to the doctor, he he comes over the door of the ready room. Who does? Uh, Captain Cass. I stand up when he comes in. Sir, sure, um, please. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk now, but I thought uh, at some point we should have a little bit of talk about security. Check your phone. <laughs> you nasty me? Mm-hmm. Nasty Grammy. 
do do every every all of our listeners know what oh. mastograms are, right? So funny, right? I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I say, I hope fucking I hope forty fucking episodes. So. In. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. You should say so. I had the same plan. Dean sent me an Instagram that said, uh, we'll do pulling side cast for a uh, conversation on the quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, T. He steps in and kind of like looks towards the door. Yeah. I, I didn't, to be frank, I hadn't planned what I wanted to say yet. Oh, okay. But since he's in here now, I, I'll just tell him I, I have some things I want to get together to talk to him about, but that he's more than welcome to tell me what he wants to do. So why don't I just role play that? Okay. <laughs> so no, just meta explain what you're doing. Entirely. Do you want me to sick, roll for conversation? Sick, sick writing. Yeah, yeah. Roll, roll what speech. A, what a sick writer. <laughs> they converse. He leaves the room. <laughs> Fucking sick. <laughs> really engrossing. <laughs> I have plenty I want to talk to you about regarding the station security. I need to get a few things together first, but please show your concerns. Have a seat. Uh, thanks, sir. I, s- I sit down. It can be quick. I just maybe had a couple thoughts you could consider, and um, we did. You have the up. bubbly in his hand. Oh, did you? Pay? Yeah. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So do I. Okay. He um takes a sip, and I take a sip when he does. Um, well, I had the full report coming, but uh, with uh, the extra pilots from the uh, that CAG sent us. Mm. I feel better about what's happening as far as direct security in the station right now. It's going to be tough to maintain the long term. And anytime there's any kind of op, whether it's boarding patrol down to the planet, it's going to put people over a sustainable rate. I see. Um, And as far as an investigation, I told you before, sir, my men are not cops, they're not investigators, but we need to find out more. We do. This might sound a little unconventional, sir, and maybe even a little crazy. I think we need to reach out to the NCC. I understand maybe we don't fully trust them. I don't. But I got a good feeling about Sergeant Valen, even though there's definitely something fishy there. I think we need to get to the bottom of it, and I don't think we're going to know. I don't think we have a chance to figure out what the Calari are up to without them, sir, to be honest. Maybe we can protect the station, but... We're just going to be sitting back and reacting. Indeed. I'm not one to sit back and react, Cass. I'd rather take the initiative and see what we can do. It proved very fruitful in the jungle when we pressed. It always proves fruitful when we press. It's how the Empire has gotten where it is. It doesn't wait, and we shouldn't either. That said, I do think we should maintain... I, I do think we should ensure that the station security is good but I do agree. We should reach out to NCC. And how do you feel about army personnel, the majors? Could they be cross-trained? Maybe if we leaned on him a little to get a favor and got some men? They could, sir. But, I mean, if we only scratch the surface of what's down there, I'd be worried that I mean, yeah, they're, sure. yeah. they're one patrol away from walking into a hornet's nest that they might not even have an idea of yet. Mm-hmm. I don't think we do. Indeed. If they could spare them, though, I mean, certainly. We we can make do with what we have. I got pilots that can ba- barely shave guarding engineering right now. So, we extend our investigation to the NCC, or, or we reach out to the NCC and extend our, our investigation planet side. Yes, sir, and again, if if we can get a good feeling of it, maybe we even can ask them to help out up here. We need security in three places. I point to outer space. (laughs) I say here and down there. We need to increase, not decrease our efforts. We need to ensure that every single ship is accounted for, that there are no blind spots on any approach to this planet. We cannot have that. If those gorillas are down below, there's one thing I do know. They will run out of supplies eventually. They've been getting free shipments, not even on the flight logs, just landing and taking off running it out on pack animals. We can't have that. We have to stop their supply. Yes, sir. Though, I'd caution you not to underestimate the ability of gorillas to (laughs) sustain. Indeed. Uh, I know Operations has those probe droids ready to launch, but I don't know, sir. Just something to consider. We can talk more later. Indeed. Before you go, Cass, 
How's your man? Heading back up to check on him, sir. Uh, he's a fighter, but it's uh, it's not good. Doc's doing everything he can. I think the doctor should shift his priority from the commanding officer to your man and getting that box tank up and running. What do you think? Well, I mean, as... I'm reading him very carefully. I mean, the commander seems stable. I agree. Dismissed. Sir. He stands, kind of finishes his drink and <laughs> walks out, <laughs> completing <laughs> the coup. Uh, <laughs> success. Uh, Much success. <laughs> Rando, you got a call um, mm. from <laughs> Lieutenant <laughs> Sue. I thought was, sorry. <laughs> I fucking, we need a door noise and we need a calm noise. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> That's when it opens. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> Randar. Uh, Metalhead is Bandit. Bandit. Uh, I, got this, I got this order for... Uh, in system, uh, in system escort for the fuel shipment coming in from VRX four. Right. Um, sorry. So, you, uh, what do we send it for craft? Huh. Um. Well, I would say a full flight of Tie Fighters, given the situation. But um, we could do it, sir. It's pretty. This is pretty thin. We'll put a uh, two interceptors on ready five. Hmm. How long? Uh, how long is that uh, escort mission? Do you think would? Uh, four hours there and back. Hmm. Four hours. Most of it back. Hmm. The speed of that slug. Right. Well, we need that fuel. Without that, we won't have any birds in the air. Yeah, send ion flight. <clears throat> Full complement. You pick your men. Whoever's on ready, we'll have two interceptors on ready five. All right, we'll do, sir. Um, beep boop. <laughs> I want to communicate with the doctor. Okay. I go down to sick bay. No one's nasty grabbing me. <laughs> you're on. You're on the up and up, brother. Dino. Mm-hmm. You're the only honorable one on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> you. You're going to talk to the doctor. Yeah. After, okay. After that. Okay. Dan, did you send him a message? I sent him a message. That, oh shit! An encrypted message That's, that just said new that, information. We should talk. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. That's all it said. Didn't say anything else. Okay. Got it. All right. You, you want to do the doc first? It's just a, it's just a quick, quick. Hit. Okay. <laughs> Doctor. He's got a pillow over the commander's head. <laughs> <laughs> I put a hand on and help him and continue the conversation. <laughs> That's savage. Oh. Oh, just yeah, a yeah, yeah. fucking leather gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm in my office looking looking Preparing over uh, some, some new brain scans. Hello, Air Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I just talk. walk in, <laughs> and I say, um, <clears throat> "How's Cass's man doing?" Off and on, with the back to tanks down. I'm I'm still not sure if he's gonna pull through, but let's shift priority to him, sir. Of course. Do you need uh, any assistance trying to get this box tank up and running again? How's Harper doing? Uh, making progress. Uh, Orn came by, asked me if I needed anything. He could perhaps expedite some shipments. supplies. Mm, yes. I believe we're going to be talking to Kuiper soon. That must be what he's referring to. Good, good. Uh, on, on those lines, I'd, uh, well, when I, these scans, I, some of these are from during the battle, uh, about timestamps of the comms burst. There was activity, I guess you could say. I shut the medical, I shut the door to medical. Shh. I'm sorry. I stepped closer to him. It seems, uh, this... Organism reacts to comms frequencies. I, 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 I'm, I'm not quite sure, but it does seem that this thing has, uh, well, for lack of a better word, fused 
with the commander. Would you call this a security risk? Absolutely, sir. <laughs> Very well. Let's just make sure we keep him sedated for the safety of the ship, uh, for the safety of the station. Understood, sir. Of course, make sure he's healthy, but no reason to endanger the ship if this thing attached to his brain reacts to communication signals. Let's assume that anything he hears, they hear. Understood? Yes, sir. Isolation. Indeed. It's the only way to be sure. We'll share this news with the staff. Agreed. I'd also like to talk to Orrin about some equipment to perhaps test some hypothesis with this. Really? Yes. I look forward to your findings. Thank you, sir. You're doing a great job, Doc, as usual. Congratulations again. You both feel the, the soft rumble of uh, <clears throat> ties being launched from the hangar. It's just kind of like a, like a thud mm-hmm. from the catapults. Four total. As I'm walking, I turn and I touch my ear. Say, how's your hearing? Improving. The tinnitus is still present. Hmm. Well, speedy recovery, Doc. <laughs> Thank you, we sir. We need you. That much is clear. Agreed. Good luck in that good luck in that box to tank up and running. What do you think the turnaround is on that? Well, depending on what Orn can get. Three days to a week, perhaps. Very well. Let's go ahead and prioritize that. Get Cass's man out of the woods. Right away, sir. I could well reach out to the governor as well. Mm. I walk over, open the med bay door. I turn and I look at him and I say, consider swooping your infirmary for, for bugs, for listening devices. I'm not sure how these rebels are catching on to what's happening. Maybe it's him. I point to the CO. Maybe not. Just be safe. Yes, sir. I walk out. I look at my data pad as I'm walking back to my office. Just see what it says. Oh, it just says meet him. I keep yep. doing that. Sorry. <clears throat> Probably in your little Intel mm-hmm. cell. I'll go see him. I'll Probably just... working on all the shit that I burned up. Mm. I, I, I go see him. Okay. He's under a panel somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Soldering wires together. <laughs> I kind of push myself out from underneath. Ah, huh. Commander. Keep working. I take a knee down near you. <clears throat> Very good, sir. I look at what he's doing. Oof. It's quite a mess. Yeah, it is. In fact, um... Triold, I'm going to need some uh, some different tools for this. Can you uh, go down to um, engineering and pick me up a few of the supplies? I have it listed on your data pad. I know this is a casual dismissal. Triol says, uh, yeah, we'll do, sir. As I hear the beep, 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 door close. <laughs> That's not what it does. Okay. <laughs> Hate it. Hate it. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, I keep working. Well, sir. I kind of watch what he's doing. It's interesting to me. The the information, the the back door that I left in uh, Kuiper Corp. Yes. It's proving fruitful. They do, in fact, know about our losses. Very well. But more importantly, it's what's happening out there that we're not learning about here. Hmm. There has been at least three flag-level officers that have attempted to take matters into their own hands. Ah, I see. It is becoming an issue. The cracks are beginning to show. Recruiting doctors to coup plans, things like this? (laughs) I don't say that. (laughs) 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 Ah, well. They're taking advantage of chaos. It's a rather predictable approach. Mm. Indeed. But what's interesting is the commands that have been passed down to Kuiper Corp. From? Their head of operations. They are to continue to assist all those loyal to the ERC. That's uh, the Emperor's Ruling Council. The ERC? Mm -hmm. So as long as they were to believe that this is the way things are. 
he, he's kind of takes a pause. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Kuiper Corp is under orders to assist in all possible ways. I see. Under orders. Under orders. You are effectively following the commands of the ERC. As right. far as you know, that is the, what was initially passed down. You're, as far as you know, well, the bulk of, or all, or most of the Empire is, is following those orders. That puts you at odds with Jib- the Jibuic. Is yes. am I saying that correctly? <clears throat> yes, which you it's don't- not public yet? No. You don't think anyone on the station knows until he brought this up. And mm-hmm. you don't even know if he knows it's that close. Capricorn, they're playing the odds. Of course. My concern, Nero? Yes? Is that Sila, this woman, she met with Otto Karun. Otto Karun is one of the managers for Kuiper. Sila is a rebel operative. If the Alliance could convince Kuiper that they have the winning hands, if they win the hearts and minds, and more importantly, the security of Kuiper and their future profits, it doesn't matter what the Empire says, they'll go with the rebels. Security. Mm. It is important. Especially if you're trying to turn profits and not get your shareholders and your workers killed in some sort of war. Kuiper's here for the money. I know that Kelroon is here for the money as well. Mm. Something different outside of his regular pay? No, but he accepted this posting for a 50% uh, pay increase. I see. Authorized by the shareholders? Correct. <laughs> Can't blame him for taking it, I suppose. So he is interested in financial security. I'm sure he's interested in the security of his wife and children as well. Yeah. <laughs> wife and children. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You haven't seen Orn's <sighs> face in any of this. He's just got his like head buried in the mechanics. <laughs> I understand. The frailties of the flesh. How unfortunate. <laughs> well, I'm sure it won't come to that. As but- long as we are operating under the ERC, they will do everything in their power to support us. Unless, of course, a charismatic and striking woman convinces them of some heroic deed that they could do otherwise. We have to make sure that that message gets muddled up a bit. Good job, by the way. Thank you, Stopping that sensor, stopping that communique from going out, stopping that propaganda, that nonsense, was (laughs) critical in our success here. Information is the real power. Indeed. And to that end, sir, um... He actually pushes out from underneath, <clears throat> looking over some of the reports uh, that I put out before this. He kind of puts his hands towards the communication system. I received some information on both the captain of the Wandering Sprite ah. and the ship itself. Do tell. The captain, uh, <clears throat> he... He'd registered the ship uh, about six months ago. There's not a lot of information on the ship, which leads me to believe it's probably the records are dummied. Uh, Additionally, over the last six months, the logs show that his ship made four separate trips into the VRX system. And what's really interesting about that, sir, is that there was some sort of... um, malfunction or technical issue that prevented the sensor tracks from being logged. So that means one of two things, sir, either there's something on the ship that jams those frequencies, which we can investigate. And depending on what that yields, that means someone at the station was providing misinformation and that we can use to our advantage. Mm, Indeed. What do you think? I'm willing to bet. I searched that ship. There were compartments for smuggling. Definitely was set for smuggling, wasn't it? Yes, but the the jamming software, it wasn't anything on this level. Not that I believe. So I'm more inclined to think that there's someone within the tower. 
someone that we can get to and start working our way back to the network that exists and how they're relaying information to one another. Mm. And we must make that part of our investigation. Cass has many misgivings about the surface of the planet and the things going on down there. He believes we should reach out to the NCC. It's his opinion we'll never figure out this web without at least some assistance from people who are not flipped by these gorillas. Nero tend, nods his head. I tend to agree with that. Next you, order of business. Are you aware of Thorne's investigation? You you definitely are. You, you've probably been busy with other stuff, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> enough casual reports. I don't know if you've dug yep. into it more. I say um, Thorne will be Thorne. Of course. He's Compnor. Who else is where we are? There's no- right now, no one. Huh. The, the the intel room is very small. Okay. That, it's Makes sense. Off the side of the CIC. Um, I, lock, I, I, I lock the door. I'm assuming that's where you are. Okay. Oh, it's always locked. Mm-hmm. It's always locked. It's yep. like, it's an well, intel room. Yep. yep. Okay. Like most of the people that work on the bridge don't have <laughs> access to this. I lower myself close to him. <laughs> I say, I know that you're aware and I know she can't hide it because... <laughs> Subterfuge is not her specialty. Miss Cecilyn has thoughts about you. Not the kind at night. <laughs> I don't know about that. But thoughts without evidence, let's just put it this way. But her and Thorne had a discussion. Nero smiles a little. I don't want this turning into something that it doesn't need to turn into. I'm not a fool, Nero. Wouldn't take you for one, sir. I think you're brilliant. And I think you are the precise kind of thinking that the Empire needs if we expect to get out of this mess we find ourselves in with the rebels. We have to think beyond some of the old ways without abandoning them completely. Specifically loyalty. It's very important. Nero nods. I understand how deals work, Nero. I don't expect you to get a deal and then say, oh, long live the empire. I kind of laugh. (laughs) I don't expect you to be rubbing shoulders with Thorn and saluting your betters and going to bed feeling the imperial blood in your veins. But I do expect you to survive. So, can I trust you, Nero? When my survival is at stake, always. Why? Why? Why do we go on, Captain? That's a very philosophical question. I'm feeling philosophical. I take out a cigarette. <laughs> a death stick. <laughs> I offer one to him. Nero takes it. I light them and we continue to talk. Essentially, without belaboring this for too long, what I just want to do is try to get a sense for the man a little bit. But I also want him to know that Seslin thinks we should do a little investigation, and I think she's absolutely right, but that Thorne is kind of doing his own thing, even though they're talking. I want that to be known to him. Okay. Yep. I, I mean, my perception is pretty high. A lot of my those sort of skills, I can sure. certainly read between the lines. Yeah. That's essentially what I want to do, because I want him to keep an eye out on what they're doing and let me know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to... Victor's goal is I don't want to shut it down and then create more suspicion, especially on me. Right. Got it. Because if it comes to me pulling in a dumb and saying, this is over in the middle (laughs) of an investigation, which I don't want to do. Yep. uh, I want to, I want to, I don't want any surprises is what I tell him. No surprises. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nero uh, kind of stubs out the, the tail end of the, death stick nice chatting with you likewise commander Eh, eh, eh. action stations for fuck's sake it never ends you open the door I extinguish my butt stick it in my pocket (laughs) you open the door and you're right there at the CIC I walk in you see Lieutenant Vrain and Lieutenant Sue um, are both on the bridge and uh, Lieutenant Vrain looks over and you says uh, sir it's uh, Ion Flight escorting the, the Kuiper freighter Got three Z95s and what? a freighter. I think it's our old friend that took down the phalanx. Oh, really? 
and we'll see you next <laughs> week. Well, well, well. Oh my god. Wow, running on E. Yeah, they're running on E. They got Z95s. That's true. Yeah, but they got three of them. They got the fours. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Nastagram. We hope you're enjoying Empire's End. You know the deal. We're going to ask you to spread the word, tell a friend, post about it online, do whatever you can, ratings, review, everything helps. And get involved. We've got a great community over at Facebook at the Nastagram RPG Lounge, or just pop over onto the website, nastagrampod.com, links to all our socials, and bonus content and more coming soon. Our intro music, as always, is by a Wilhelm Scream, Scores this arc are from both Adrian Von Ziegler and Anti Mark Kynan. We'll be back with another episode next week. Why don't you bring a friend? Mmm, that's nasty.